Hello, everybody, and welcome or welcome back to the second shelf and to the first video about my big project. Take me years, 1001 books by women that I have to read before I die. If you follow my channel, you know all about it. Uh, there is a Goodread shelf because I made my own list. I wanted to focus on women authors exclusively, include nonfiction and include translated fiction and include as many authors as I could find in an English translation also from all over the world. You will find the good, a link to the Goodreads shelf. Uh, you can check that out. But the project was still inspired by Sandy from Miss Reads a Lot, who does a similar project reading off these books, you know, that you can buy. And she combines multiple books. So she, I think she had 1,300 books to read, but she is significantly younger than I am. So anyway, so um, the recap of 2022 um, leaves me first the numbers and then the books. So I start the year, um, that's another way of putting it, where 2022 leaves me is where I start 2023. So it leaves me with 560 unread books, to read books, and 441 books read. So those are the numbers. Uh, my plan is uh, to try, and I read four books in December, a total of 68 in 2020. Two, and I try to increase this number because 560, if you divide that by 80 books, it's seven years and seven is a good number because my birthday is in July. You know, I'm weird. So I will try uh, this year to see whether I can read 80 books, um, which also means that I will... Um, try and find books for other projects that I'm doing, like the 12 classics. All 12 are from the list. I will make a separate video about those. Don't worry about it. Um, and uh, also other books that, you know, other projects that I'm doing. I will try to not only do the 1001 books for this particular project, if that makes sense, so that I can actually do 80 books because that's almost half of what I read in a year. Not, not entirely, but almost. Anyway, the four books um, of December. Uh, the first one uh, was this, Doris Lessing, The Golden Notebook, published in 1962. And I read this as a buddy read with Karen from Run Right Reads. Um, and she already made a video about it. We both struggled a bit with this book. Um, it was for me, I mean, it's about, let, let's first back up and tell you what it's about. It's about Anna Wolf, uh, a writer who doesn't, has had a successful book, but now has kind of a you know, is in a slump. Um, and also she is not really um, getting on with her life. So she has issues in more in general about relationships, about her politics. Uh, she used to be a member of the Communist Party, uh, about her past in Africa. So there are a lot of issues she's trying to come to terms with or get a grip on. And she, when the book opens, she just had ended or the, the partner had ended a long-term relationship and she has a child from a previous relationship. So she's now a single mom. The book is set in the end of, at the end of the 1950s. Um, and we follow Anna through that journey to come to terms with her life. Um, there are, uh, snippets of her, life now as it is in 1957 with her friend Molly. And then you have her notebooks where she keeps uh, track of her past, uh, of her political views, of her relationships and of her writing. And the, the notebooks show you that her life is quite fragmented. Um, I mean, Doris Lessing, you know, does need an introduction, a Nobel uh, laureate. But the book was for me more interesting than enjoyable. It was an, an almost as if I read a, 
a, hist- a book, book about history to see how women felt in 1962, why this book made such an an impact and such a big impression. It is very, very detailed about, you know, almost psychoanalytical about the life of Anna. It's also postmodern, this kind of meta um, tale and which what is real and what isn't. Uh, is she also writing the part as fiction uh, where, where uh, we learn about her life and uh, in the present day? So, it, it, I wouldn't, I don't want to say it was a slog because that's way too negative, but I had to push myself through the book and always keep in mind that I want to read it because it's interesting as a document, so to speak. But it was not my favorite novel to read ever. So. But we finished it. And I think Karen felt the same way. But we finished it. Um, The next one was another body read with Kathleen from Kathleen Ann, who just returned to BookTube last week. So that is fantastic. So we have two BookTubers, Terry and Kathleen, who actually returned in 2023. So it's going to be, I said that in a previous video, it's going to be a really good year. But uh, Kathleen and I are reading... Um, uh, doing buddy reads regularly and focusing on feminist literature. A lot of nonfiction, sometimes fiction. And in December, we read nonfiction Angela Davis collection, Women, Culture, Politics, published in 1989. And it's essays and speeches and addresses um, all written or given between 1980. Two and 1987, so in the first half of the 1980s, roughly. Um, and it, it had a bit the same uh, impact on me than the Golden Note, uh, as the Golden Notebook, because it was interesting as mainly as a looking back at that time. I was in my 20s in 1980, in the 1980s, and there is a lot of things that I was not really conscious of. I was not, I was political, but I was also wanting to, you know, have a good job, earn money, be independent, financially independent. Um, The Reagan era was at, at its height at that time. So it was really interesting to look back and remember stuff. And also, at a lot of these essays, unfortunately, made it clear how little has changed. Um, even though some geopolitics are completely different. I mean, this was still the Soviet Union, but still the this the tension between um, you know big powers and also the racism, um, f- but and feminism, how, you know, we still struggle. It was a weird combination of, well, the whole world has changed and everything is still the same. So in that sense, this was also a really, really interesting read. And as always, of course, I very much enjoyed the discussion uh, with Kathleen. And then, yes, I finished Aurora Lee by Elizabeth Barrett Browning, uh, published in the 19... Hundred, I mean, nineteenth century. When was it? Uh, eighteen fifty six. Eighteen fifty six. Which it's it's a long poem about the life of Aurora Lee, who tells us her life in verse, and it's highly autobiographical. If I may trust the commentators, um, and I. I liked it more than I thought I would because as you if you follow me you know that I'm not huge reader of poetry especially not in another language than German my my native my mother tongue um and certainly not these extremely long it's like almost 300 pages and eight books uh her life from her childhood and the you know the relation with her her father and her writing and uh so i also couldn't it took me a whole month i started beginning of december and i finished i think just after christmas um i could not read more than maybe 
I don't know, 20, 25 pages a day. Um, I had to read it out loud a lot of times because some of the language was unfamiliar. But in the end, like I said, I actually enjoyed it much more than I thought. So yeah, and I'm happy that I finally read it. And the last of the four I'm only going to mention because I talked about it quite extensively in one of my uh, recent reads, and that's the crime novel by Marcy R. Rendon, Murder on the Red River, uh, published a uh, year before last. And this was a pick by the Book Cougars, who, you know, from the podcast, but they also have uh, a quarterly read along. And this was the pick for the last quarter. And it's a crime novel uh, set in uh, indigenous in an indigenous uh, surrounding. So you have a main character who is indigenous, but also uh, where she lives in, what is it, uh, Red River Valley between North Dakota and Minnesota. Um, it was just a really good crime book. And you also, I also learned something about indigenous life in the present day. So those are the four that I finished. And like I said, they leave me uh, with 560 to read. The first I picked for uh, January is a leftover from December, and that is this one, The Passion of New Eve by Angela Carter. I talked about this in previous Women uh, 1000, 1000 in Books video, so I'm just mentioning it, that I hope to get to it. it it's, it's supposed to be weird, but it's short, so I can handle short if it's uh, weird if it's not too long. Um, the next one is a nonfiction book, uh, a quite recent, 2020, uh, published by Virago, Golem Girl by Riva Lera. Um, I told you in my goals video that I also want to focus on certain favorite presses, um, look at their backlist. And this is the f one of the first books I came across and it was on my list, a thousand and one list. Uh, Riva Lera, uh, here is a picture of our author, is born in 1958. Uh, she is an artist, um, a painter, and she was born with, how do you call that in English, spina bifida, which means an open back so that your spinal cord isn't, hasn't developed uh, um, as it should have. And there is a sort of a hole. Yeah, I'm pointing at my back, which you can't see, but there's kind of a hole. Uh, I'm not a, me a medical person, so please excuse me. But there's kind of a hole where part of the spinal cord uh, comes out and is protected by a sac. So you need extensive surgery, not only to, to close that, but it also has consequences for your development, for your growth, for the way you are able to walk. Um, so the, she had, uh, when she wrote this memoir in um, 2020, um, she had something like 43 surgeries uh, during her life. Um, so she, it's, it's a memoir about her illness, but it's, it, and it's really interesting, of course, for me to learn something about that, but it's a memoir by an artist. Uh, developing her art, how she came to paint, what she's painting. And there's, there's also, um, quite some, um, pictures of her art because she also uh, paints other artists who have some sort of disability. Um, and that is a red thread through the book. So really, really interesting. Um, and the next one is fiction again. Uh, my pick, Claire Coda, uh, Women Eating. And this is, um, I think this edition is, I could only get this edition and this is not Virago Press, but it is published by Virago Press. So, uh, I think, um, this is Harper Via. I, I couldn't get. Virago, I'm sorry, I couldn't get your edition. Um, so Claire Coda is um, also a, a poet. Um, I think it's, whoops, it says, uh, right, no, it's not true, a writer and a musician, that was it. Um, and this book is about um, a young woman, Lydia, 
um, who is a vampire. But it's not a fantasy story. So, yeah, sounded fascinating. <laughs> um, then I have translated fiction uh, and another buddy read with Adam. Uh, and we will read Olga Raven, The Employees, published, uh, 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 translated from the Danish, let me check, forgot the name of the translator, Martin Aitken, Atkin, Aitken, A-I-T-K-I-N. Um, the Danish version was published in 2018, and this English in 2022, it's sci-fi. And experimental in a way because it's all statements are taken uh, from people on a spaceship. So we'll see how Adam and I get on with this one. We start um, half January and it's a short book, so it's only a week. Um, the next two are also buddy reads. So that that's one of the things that when I said earlier, I try to include the books also in other pro projects, for instance, buddy reads. If if I can, um, you know, um, if I, I want to do a buddy read and somebody is interested in one of the books from the list, that will help me read more from the list in this year. So with Jo Smith, uh, whom I can't link below because she has no uh, presence on YouTube other than that she is one of the most loyal viewers and commenters uh, of many of us. And we will read uh, uh, this, Marsha Mobali, Mohbali, I think, maybe, translated from the Arabic by Mariam Rahmani, uh, in case of emergency, an Iranian novel. Again, trying to, you know, <laughs> do like, Take two for three or something. I don't know. <laughs> because I also want to focus on Global South Iran. So that came in handy. It's the, the a story of, of a young woman. What do you do when the world is fa falling apart and you are in withdrawal? So Shadi wakes up one day to apocalyptic earthquakes and dangerously low stash. And it's set in Tehran. And we will read this towards the end of the month. So I think we will start on the 22nd. And the last one, also a buddy read that I had to move a little, uh, also towards the end of the month is a buddy read with Sandy, because if we find a book that is on both our lists, uh, we it, it's fun to buddy read them. And we read, we are going to read this Mexican novel, Laura Esquivel, Like Water for Chocolate, and translated from the Spanish by another translator I couldn't remember, Carol and Thomas Christensen. So uh, um, a couple, not a couple of translator, but a couple translator. Um, and the book was published in 1989 in Iran, in Iran, in Mexico, and the English translation is from 1995. And that's all I know. I have to admit, I don't know anything about this book, um, but it is a number one bestseller in Mexico, and it was a debut. Um, it relates the bizarre story of the all-female De La Garza family. So it's a family story set in Mexico, and it's on my list. That's all I need to know. And I'm looking forward to reading this with you, Sandy. So these are the planned reads for January and what I read in December. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to all of your comments as always, and I'll see you all soon in the next one.